Hi, I'm Jen Love from the University of Wyoming, Beta Alpha Psi, Delta Alpha Chapter. Today we're going to be looking at a problem similar to 3.9 on page 81 of Copley's 10th edition of the Essentials of Accounting for Governmental and Not-for-Profit Organizations. First of all, we want to take a look at the problem and see what it's asking for. The City of Laramie budget for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2011, included an appropriation for the Police Department in the amount of $5 million. During the month of July 2010, the following transactions occurred. Purchase orders were issued in the amount of $500,000. Of the $500,000 in purchase orders, 475 were filled with invoices amounting to 465. Salaries not encumbered amounted to 550,000. A budget appropriations reduction in the amount of $50,000 was approved by the City Council. The problem asks us to prepare an appropriations, expenditures, and encumbrances ledger for the Police Department for the month of July, in the format similar to Illustration 3.7. If you have your book with you, go ahead and turn to page 75. At the bottom, it shows Illustration 3.7, and this is just a really good template to use for solving this problem. I've gone ahead and made the template for this problem. You want to include a basic header that shows the city that you're doing this for, show that it's a ledger, give the fund that you're doing it for, and the year. You also want to have a few columns. Reference is the first one. This basically just gives an explanation of the transaction that occurred. Appropriations, this is when you establish a budget or you make any changes to increase or decrease the budget. Encumbrances are contracts, so these are any purchase orders you have for goods or services. Expenditures could include things such as salaries or the invoices you receive for your encumbrances. The final column is unexpended appropriation balance. This is just the balance that you have after each transaction has occurred. So let's go back to our problem and see what our first transaction is. It looks like there was an appropriation in the amount of $5 million created. So we will go ahead and put for our reference, establish a budget. Appropriations increased by $5 million, so our balance is also $5 million. The next transaction says purchase orders were issued in the amount of $500,000. So for our reference, purchase orders were issued. And so we have a negative number here for our encumbrances because it is reducing our appropriations. The next transaction says of the $500,000 in purchase orders, $475,000 were filled with invoices amounting to $465,000. So invoices were received and then our encumbrances were only um, taking away $475,000. This means that there's $25,000 left in encumbrances that will be filled later on. The $465,000 is what we actually paid for these encumbrances. We thought it was going to be four seventy-five, dollars 75 but it was a little cheaper. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, and sometimes it's dead on. It just kind of depends. So here we have our updated balance. The next transaction was salaries not encumbered that amounted to $550,000. So we can go ahead and record those as an expenditure. Our reference is payroll and $550,000 and this gives our updated balance. The final transaction was a reduction in the amount of appropriations we have and that was by $50,000. So here we have a reduction of our budget and appropriations are decreasing. This gives our final balance of $3,910,000. A really good thing to do along the way is to keep column totals. We've gone ahead and done that for this problem. The first one gives you just an idea of what your appropriations are. The next one, encumbrances, is very important. This just shows, like I said before, that those $25,000 haven't been filled yet, and you want to keep track of the balance of your total encumbrances as the year goes on. This is just an update of our total expenditures. And here, this balance is very important. The way we came up with this balance was by summing the totals for these columns. And you want to make sure that this number equals the 3.91 million from up above. If those numbers equal, you're probably doing the problem correct. This brings us to the end of the problem. Once again, my name is Jen Love from the University of Wyoming, Beta Alpha Psi, Delta Alpha Chapter. Thank you.